Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of This Week in the World of Football. This is episode number 365 for October 8th, 2024. I'm your host, Randy Snow. On this week's show, we have our first NFL head coach firing of the season. Big wins mean big fines for two college football teams. And three more teams punch their tickets to the CFL playoffs. But I'm not here all by myself. Across the table for me, as always, is my son, Adam. Boy, oh boy. Uh, you know me. I am a proponent of chaos in my college football. Uh-huh. And uh, just in most football in general. And that's what we got this weekend. Just yeah. absolute chaos. I can't wait to talk about all of it. Yeah. From, a lot of... from the Jets organization <laughs> down to a college kid storming a football field and then walking down the road with a goal post. It's... <laughs> I love it. I, I say this so many times, you know, Tuesday comes around and I'm looking at the script and I'm going, man, we don't have a whole lot. And Tuesday's when all the crap comes out. And uh, yeah, so we'll talk about that. Unless it's just, today but... and you go, oh crap, I did not work on the obituaries for yes, today's episode. I, I got I'm busy with other stuff. Record. And uh, normally I have four or five obituaries, but I, I made some notes by hand and I got one that I definitely want to talk I about. I get it. You, you had to prepare for your Florida trip you got here in a couple of weeks, which, yeah. hey, by the way, everybody, in two weeks... Um, me and a special guest host will be here to take over the podcast. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> this is your doing. Yeah, I know. Well, technically, know. it was Mom's doing because she sent you on this that's, trip. <laughs> that's right. She said, I needed a vacation and take your take your youngest son and uh, go have some fun. Take your son and get out. <laughs> and now she's realizing that she's going to have to feed the dogs and the cats. You and know, co-host and a podcast. Those, those needy animals. and Oh, my gosh. What are you going to do when you, get, when you hear the podcast and it's me and Mom just talking football for an hour i'll probably turn it off and say well that's a throwaway <laughs> <laughs> all right we come to you each week from the fabulous world of football man cave located right here in the center of the football world kalamazoo michigan we're here to promote the game of football in all its many forms past present and future our goal is to educate inform and entertain our listeners with the glorious buffet that is the world of football all this while keeping a close eye on the rich history of the game Thanks for checking out our podcast. We'd love to get your feedback on one of our many platforms, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, TuneIn, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Amazon Music. So you can simply ask your Alexa device to play the World of Football podcast. We also have timestamps down in the descriptions of both the podcast and many of our YouTube videos, so you can go right to the topics you really want to listen to. You can also find our podcast in its full audio form on our YouTube channel. Just search for The World of Football Kalamazoo or use the handle at The World of Football in the YouTube search bar. You'll find over 400 videos on our YouTube channel, including our CFL Week 17 recap from last week and uh, an episode of Just Lying Around where uh, Adam and Kyle talked about the Lions-Seahawks game from Monday night. That Monday night game, yep, Yep. we finally got around to that. And... uh, this upcoming week, we'll have our Week 18 CFL recap video up. We recorded that last night, so it's going to be a couple of days to get around to that. We have Just Lying Around. We'll probably be talking bye week slash previewing the Lions-Cowboys game this weekend. Got to get with Kyle on that. And then we'll have our Week 5 NFL Picks video up on Wednesday, as always. I forgot to do the post about uh, get your picks oh, up on yeah. the community tab. I'll get that tonight so people can start putting in their picks for this week's NFL games. Yep. Okay. All right, well, let's begin our weekly tour around the world of football, and we're going to start off this week with scores from Week 5 in the NFL. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Week 5 NFL started on Thursday night football, which saw the Tampa Bay Buccaneers go down to Atlanta and get beat at the end of the game by Matt Ryan. Well, not Matt Ryan. Uh, who's the quarterback <laughs> there? Kirk Cousins now. Kirk Cousins uh, beat the Buccaneers 36-30. to 30. Uh, Kirko Cousins, uh, you know, he just oh, threw for 500-something yards, yeah. breaking uh, Matt Ryan's team record <laughs> on Matt Ryan night of all yeah. nights uh, for the Atlanta Falcons. When they inducted uh, Matt Ryan into the uh, ring of honor there. Yeah. And you and I will never forget Matt Ryan's first pass Ugh. in the NFL. Against the Lions. It was against Detroit. His very first play, his very first pass was a long touchdown pass. Don't know who it went to. Yeah, I can't remember. It had to be like an 80-yard, 70-yard you know, touchdown It was yard 60 or 70-yard. Yeah, it was a run. bomb. Oh, my gosh. Because right. we, we thought, oh, this is going to be a sure win. Rookie quarterback, first game. Oh, we got this game won. No, I can't remember if we won or lost. We game, lost. I, I think we lost I just game. remember that first play. Oh, my god. Yeah, gosh. so long ago. But <laughs> So the Falcons come out with the win there in overtime. Uh, yeah, Kirk Cousins just 
you know, slinging it. Yeah, he looked really good. He looked re- very sharp. I mean, the Buccaneers, I mean, even looked good in this game. Don't let that fool you. Yeah. They still looked good, too. It was a yeah. good game. Um, also from this, I know Amazon kind of did like a spinoff uh, episode, and I had you watch a little bit of it. It's uh, called the – oh, it's, it's hosted by Eli Manning. And I wanted to throw this out there. It's called Eli Manning Presents the Undercovers. It's from hmm. produced by Amazon Prime, hmm. but it's on the YouTube. And it's a video about Baker Mayfield going undercover as Gus Swayze uh. Uh, in the, as, as a part of like a tour group of super Tampa Bay Buccaneer fans. Season and ticket holders. So obviously, if everybody remembers a few years ago when uh, Eli Manning did his Kenny Powers bit, where yep. he went undercover yep. and... Uh, Slinging it, you know. Yep. It kind of, it was kind of that, but it's like a half hour episode. I thought it was a lot of fun. You watched a little bit of it. I watched, I watched the whole bit. thing. Yep. It's super entertaining. It's funny seeing, you know, uh, Baker Mayfield trying to stay in character and try to, you know, not dupe these fans, but you know, just kind of <laughs> go under the radar for a little right. bit until he finally ultimately reveals that he's Baker Mayfield, and it was pretty cool. There's some cool stuff in there if you guys get a chance to check that out. I only wanted to mention that because it was Thursday, you know. Uh, Thursday Night Football, Amazon, Amazon did this other special thing. Okay. So, uh, moving on to the Sunday slate of games, we had a game over in uh, London this weekend. Yes. So, uh, the start of the longest day in NFL, like a, a day in the NFL, I believe, started at 930 in the morning. Uh, I watched this whole game. The Minnesota Vikings defeated the New York Jets 23-17. to It was like 17-0 uh, for most of the first half. I think it was 17-7 to going into the half. So the Jets kind of climbed back in the second half, showed a little bit of life. But, man, this game was so dull and boring to start off. Uh, I felt bad for everybody in London watching this thing. But uh, I don't know if you caught any of this or not. Uh, I saw a little bit of it. But, man, I just I just don't like either of these teams. I don't think either of them were very good. I was kind of rooting for the Jets to win just to knock off the Vikings from being undefeated. But then I was also rooting for the Vikings to embarrass Aaron Rodgers. And only one of those things could happen. And they embarrassed Aaron Rodgers a little bit. And, uh then, of course, the Jets, the big news this week, obviously, with the Jets. Uh, besides Aaron Rodgers hitting 60,000 passing yards during that game, yeah. is the fact that they fired head coach Robert Sala this morning. This morning. Had a 20-36 and 36 record since he came to the team in 2021. Defensive coordinator Jeff Ulbrich will take over as the interim head coach five weeks into the season. Yeah. Uh, and we have our first head coaching firing. What do you think? Uh, awfully early. but Right? Uh, <laughs> That's what I thought when somebody told me that happened. I was like, there's no way. We're only five weeks in. And yeah. they fired him. Uh, wasn't there a coach that got fired like after two weeks a couple of years ago? Maybe. Uh, I can't remember. But but yeah, but even so, I mean, I, I didn't think Salah and, you know, I figured they'd probably clean house after the season, after they tanked the whole season long. But if, they if didn't it even didn't wait work. that long. They yep. didn't even wait to see if it would work. I mean, you're two and three. And honestly... You win on Sunday. Guess what? You're first place in your division. Yeah. So I, it doesn't make sense why they would get rid of Sala. Because the problem with that team is not their defense, which Robert Sala pretty much, mm. you know, helped build. Mm. Um, the, I know there were reports that he kind of got escorted out by security, which is really weird. And there's other people who said Aaron Rodgers had nothing to do with the firing. Yeah, right. I don't believe that report. <laughs> but. It's just bizarre. I mean, Robert Sala was a candidate at one point back in 2021. Yes. That I was, I, he was my number one candidate for coming to Detroit to be a head coach. Yep. So he's been in New York for three years. They haven't really done much. We figured, hey, this year was kind of you – know, last year was a pass because Aaron Rodgers got hurt. We wanted to see what that experiment looked like. Right. And five games into the season this year, that experiment is two and three, and it seems like him and Aaron Rodgers aren't getting along, and – Gee, I wonder who had influence to say, "Hey, Mister, um, who's the Jets owner?" Oh, I don't know. I forget I the Jets tell you owner. His name. But uh, yeah, maybe we should get rid of this head coach because I'm not happy. That whole team is a dumpster fire and yeah, organization you know, top and down. I'll I'll bring the hot dogs and the marshmallows, and we'll we'll have a nice little uh, weenie roast uh, on that dumpster fire. Good lord, I just I just feel bad. Like I got a buddy who's a Jets fan, and. It's just, I hate to see this. I mean, I thought they'd be competitive this year. They could still be. It's only five. That's the other thing that gets me. You were only five games into the season. Yep. Uh, but we'll see if this change works. I think they have a bye this week, so they're not even playing this weekend. Uh, they, they might have a bye, yeah. Because if you play in London, don't you get a bye right after usually? Usually, but yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Okay, well, I'm just going to take a quick peek at this week's games just to make sure. I'm pretty I got sure. it over here. Oh, nope, they play Monday night. So they play against the Bills on Monday night football. So... Never mind, they don't have a bye. I was like, oh, very smart to do it on your bye week. Nope. So, yeah, if they win on Monday Night Football, 
against the Bills, they'd be in first place or near first place in their division. Yeah. So, okay. Enough about the Jets. J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. We're tired of talking about you. All right, moving on to the next game. The Carolina Panthers fell to the Chicago Bears 36-10. to Caleb Williams looking slightly better, but I still don't trust him or that team. You played the Panthers. Yep. I ain't got much to say about yep. that. Yep. Uh, the Baltimore Ravens beat the Cincinnati Bengals in overtime 41-38. to This is probably the game of the day, or game of the weekend, rather, because it's such a high-scoring game. The Bengals have put up 105 points, I want to say, in three games, and they've only won one of those games. So there's a problem with the Bengals' defense. That offense yeah. is you know, carrying that team, and that defense can't help them out. Hmm. But Lamar Jackson, the Ravens, obviously. Lamar Jackson hit the highlight from that game of him pretty much just getting like near tackled two or three times, and he still made a throw to get a touchdown to tie the game up before overtime. Hmm. Bengals, I think, missed a field goal in overtime. And then uh, the – Ravens went down and Justin Tucker kicked the game winner. Yeah, I don't, so, I don't recall. I don't know what to make of it. I mean, the Ravens, you know, we figured it would be decent, but the Bengals we thought would be better than, man, what their record is right now. Uh, the Houston Texans defeated the Buffalo Bills 23-20. to Controversy from this game, obviously. Josh Allen getting knocked out at one point. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then, I'm shocked he went back in the game. And then all they did was give him some smelling salts and threw him right back out in the mm. game. Like, uh, If that's not investigated, yeah. I mean – I don't know what will. Also, what needs to be investigated is the fact that they let Houston wear those atrocious uh, H-Town uniforms. <laughs> Hated them when they you know, unveiled them. They look stupid on the field. I don't like them. Yeah. Uh, I mean, our, our buddy over at Off the Wall kept, you know. Trey. Trey kept talking about people on the internet calling them arena football uniforms, and he was just like, I will not stand. That's an insult. The, that's an insult. <laughs> Do you even know what arena football uniforms look like? <laughs> So I don't know. I just thought that was funny. But, yeah, not a fan of the Texans' H-Town uniforms. Uh, the Jacksonville – what's up? The Houston game ended with a 59-yard oh, walk-off field goal. Walk-off field uh, goal. Fair, Fair Baron, I think. Fair, Fair Baron or Fairbanks? Yeah. No, no Fair, Fair Baron. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a weird name, but, yeah, 59-yard walk-off field goal. Okay. Yep, I guess I didn't realize that part. All right, the Jacksonville Jaguars defeated the Indianapolis Colts 37-34 to to get their first win of the season, and they were rocking their 1995 Jacksonville Jaguar uniforms, which looked awesome, beautiful. Yep. Those Now, that is how you do it. Well, I mean, we're going to talk about another team who nailed their throwback uniforms this week, but I like those Jacksonville Jaguar uniforms. I wish that was their – I wish they would yeah. go with that style uniform and then the new current logo on the helmet. Like, mm. I have no problem with their original logo, but I, I like that new Jaguar logo. If you stuck that on that black helmet with those uniforms, they might be the best uniform in the league. Just throwing that out there. Mm. All right. Uh, the Miami Dolphins got a win over the Patriots 15-10. to The Washington Commanders keep winning. They're uh, a big surprise. They are a big surprise. How about that team there? They yeah. won 34-13 to over the Cleveland Browns. The controversy from this game, obviously, is the Deshaun Watson play where he kind of like walked off the field and people said he was like, Quitting, but I guess there were like twelve guys on the field, so he just got gave up on a on that play or something. I, the Browns are a mess. Yeah, I heard. Uh, I was listening to the sports talk today, and I guess over the next two years, uh, he's going to be a, a seventy three million dollars salary cap hit in each of the next two years for the Browns. Woof. So that whole deal with his, you know, guaranteed contract is a mess, and I don't think you'll see the NFL ever do that again. Well, I don't think you'll see a lot of teams do that again. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely crazy there. And I thought I heard somebody say something about them needing to dump him or want to dump his salary so that they could help pay for their the new stadium they're proposing oh. or something. I, I don't know how that all works. I oh. didn't really dive deep into that story, but just thought that was interesting. Um, let's see here. Speaking of great throwback uniforms, how about those Denver Broncos who have now won, I believe, three straight. Uh, they beat the Raiders 34-18, to and they did so in their 1977 uh, Denver Broncos, like Orange Crush Orange era Crush defense, yeah. uniforms, and they looked awesome. Yeah, I, I mean, I like the current Denver Broncos logo. Maybe not their uniforms. I like their current logo, but something about that old school seventies Orange Crush. Oh, it looked beautiful out in the sun like that. It looked yeah. pretty great. Back in the day, you know, you'd see the the orange uniforms, you know, the orange jerseys and the blue helmet. And I thought. Those two colors just don't go good together. You know, it's so weird. But now it's better than what they got going right now. <laughs> 
I mean, you have you have that helmet sitting up there, that that Denver helmet up there. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't look as blue as maybe it's just because it was so sunny in Denver for that game. But that blue really popped. Yeah, they got that blue to pop a lot, and I loved it. It looked great. Uh, they had a who's it? Pat, uh, their defensive back had a hundred yard interception return for a touchdown. Uh, there was a lot of great highlights from this game, uh, especially if what, you're a Broncos fan. What What am I always saying? Things were always better in the past. You look at these old uniforms. Why did they ever change them? I never cared for the for the new Broncos uniforms with the with the horse head helmet and all that. Never cared for it. Oh, so and, I, I didn't mind it. You know, and I. I I like the uh, the old Atlanta Falcons red helmets with the with the old. Oh yeah, didn't they black. wear those on Thursday they night? They did. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So I, I I like the old stuff. I mean, you you can't go wrong with that. I don't know. I like the Falcons current logo, uh, but I'm, that's just me. Even the creamsicle uniforms for Tampa those Bay, are, people love those now when they bring them back. So man, just do away with the new stuff. Go back to the way it was. I'm sure we're gonna get to one of those years where it's just gonna be all throwback yep. all the time. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be That's pretty good. Sure, yeah. All right. Uh, the Arizona Cardinals surprised the 49ers with an upset win, getting a 24-23 victory there. The Cardinals, how about them sneaking up on the beat-up 49ers? Uh, yeah, that was a surprise, too. Uh, then you had the Green Bay Packers go into SoFi and defeat the Rams 24-19. to Another surprise. Another I re- surprise. I really and- thought that uh, Stafford was going to uh, lead them on the win- game-winning drive there at the end. I mean, but it, it didn't happen. It's hard. It's hard when he's lo- you know, he's lost weapons left and right. Yep. But I mean, Matt Stafford now sitting at 99 career wins. Yeah, you made a note of that. Yep. Uh, if he'd have won, he that would have been his 100th win. Oh, so well. that would have been a, a great accomplishment for him. Well, uh, no offense, uh, Matthew Stafford, but uh, I'm glad that you were sitting at 99 wins. <laughs> <laughs> let the man have his. Win. I know. I'll let I'll let him have it. But I'm just. I don't know. I He's feel gonna ba- be in the Lions Ring of Honor someday, so come on. He he just might be. I'm, we'll 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 I get there at some point. It. We'll get there someday. All right. Um then the New York Giants shocked the Seattle Seahawks with a twenty nine twenty victory. If it wasn't bad enough, the Seahawks were just trying to tie this game up to try to go to overtime, but then the Giants blocked that field goal at the end of the game and returned it all the way for a touchdown. So that's how they got the twenty nine instead of just twenty three to twenty. Uh a little bit of a shock there. I thought the Seahawks, you know, after they played Detroit last week, I was like, dang, yeah. this looks like a team that everybody will have to reckon with. Yeah, Detroit got the best of them, but, I mean, this Giants team I can't make heads or tails of. I thought they'd been crap for five weeks, really? and all of yeah. a sudden they, you know, beat the Seahawks, who I thought were a good team, in their building. That's the other shockers. They did it in Seattle, which is one of the tougher places to win. Yep. Uh, Sunday night uh, saw the Dallas Cowboys defeat the Pittsburgh Steelers 20-17 to in a game that was delayed till 9.45 Eastern time, which is my bedtime. <laughs> so this game didn't get over till 12.59 a.m., I guess, which uh, made it the longest day in an NFL right. history or whatever. I, I heard that somebody threw a touchdown pass, two touchdown passes in the game, and it was on different days. I think it was interceptions. Was I think Dak mid- Prescott threw okay. two interceptions. Okay. Yeah, well, I, there was some stat like that. I one on Monday, one on Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, in the same game. In the same game. Something crazy like that. But you sent me a cool picture of, of uh, the lightning, the, the right? lightning by the stadium. Yeah. yeah I hadn't seen that. And that, that was pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, scary I wouldn't want to be also. there. Yeah, I would, I'd, I'd, I'd have hated to be there, but uh, it was a cool picture. Yep. So the Cowboys. Boys got that one. We'll see you next week, Dallas. And finally, Monday Night Football, it was Taylor Swift's Kansas City Chiefs defeating the New Orleans Saints 26-13. to The Saints wore those. I don't like their black helmet. They haven't won any games in that helmet, uh, but just stop wearing that one. It, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd seen pictures of it, but to see it on the field, it wasn't that bad. I mean, we've seen it before. I'm just not a fan of the yeah. the stripe with all the little fleur de lis on yeah. it or whatever. But. Yep. Hey, Kansas City gets another win. Uh, is anybody shocked? I mean, other other than the production of pa- Patrick Mahomes, just doesn't look like Patrick Mahomes anymore. Yeah. He gets one or two passes a game that you're like, oh, okay, that's the Patrick we know. But then the rest is just dink and dunk, and yeah. he just doesn't look like the same electric player he's been. But yeah, then they, the Chiefs still find a way to win. Yeah. So I I think they're they're more beatable this year than they were last year. But until somebody beats them, right. They're still you know one of two undefeated teams in the league. Yep. Them and uh, the Minnesota Vikings are both yes. five and zero. Oh. Yeah. All right. And then on bye this week, obviously, if the first bye week of the season, Detroit, the Chargers, Eagles, and Titans were all on byes this week, and. Uh, Anything else from the NFL before we move on? I don't think so. I don't That's think all the notes I had written down. Oh, other than um, there was a story that came out a little bit ago that the Patriots do plan to start 
uh, oh, rookie yes. quarterback Drake May. Yep. This Sunday against the Texans, the number three overall pick in the 2024 NFL Draft will make his first start this weekend. So uh, good luck, Drake May, and I hope your offensive line holds up long enough for you to see the end of the game. So yeah, <laughs> that should be interesting. All right. So, guys, now we head up north of the border to the – place where Canadian football is played, where the Rouges run free and the poutine is everywhere. That's right. We're going to talk some CFL football, Canadian Football League, for those of you not in the know. (laughs) Friday night saw the Winnipeg Blue Bombers defeat the Hamilton Tiger Cats 31-10. During this game, Mike Walker was added to the Hamilton Wall of Fame. Yeah, I I wasn't familiar with him, but he played defensive tackle for the team, and uh, he he was on the 1986 Grey Cup winning tr- team. Okay. So he, he played for a couple other teams also up in CFL, but, uh, you know, hel- helping Hamilton get to a Grey Cup victory uh, is a big thing up there. So, yep. yep. And then also from this game, Winnipeg clinching a home, a home playoff game with a win, as well as making that their eighth straight victory yeah. of the season uh, for a team that we, I mean, if, uh, talked a lot about early on. It was like, so bad the first six weeks. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Two wins in the first six weeks of the season. And then the, the complete turnaround this team has had yep. uh, to where they are now. So, I mean, we we never really doubted them. We figured they could probably yeah. get back on the horse. We knew it was just there a was, matter of time. It took longer than even we thought. But, yeah, there was a couple of weeks there where it was like, boy, I, I just don't know if they're going to do it. And they did it. So that's a well-built team there to go through that adversity and get to where they are now as they lead the West Division, which we'll talk about in a bit. Yep. Also Friday night, saw the British Columbia Lions defeat the Calgary Stampeders 32-15. to yeah, this, uh, this was a game they call the Gravy Bowl up there. The Gravy Bowl. And I think it just started last year. But uh, the uh, Thanksgiving weekend is coming up this coming weekend uh, in Canada. And uh, uh, this this was their, their home game that they wanted to do a Thanksgiving theme to it. Um, they gave out uh, uh, turkey drumsticks to several players after the game, uh, the BC game. Uh, they're they're going to be on the road next week, so uh, they get got their Thanksgiving in a little little bit early, a week early up there. But yeah, gravy bowl. Yep. <laughs> All right, and then uh, on Saturday, saw the Saskatchewan Rough Riders defeat the Edmonton Elks twenty eight to twenty four, and uh, that's it. We only had three games this weekend, everybody. Yeah, yeah. On by the Ottawa Red Blacks, Toronto Argonauts, and Montreal Alouettes. Uh, we talk a lot more about these games in great detail over on our show on our YouTube channel, Canadian Football League Weekly. Go find that. Uh, we will have that up probably Wednesday, so go out and check our Week 18 recap. Let's look at the, the division standings and talk about teams that have made the playoffs. In the East Division, the Montreal Alouettes sit at 11-3-1. They've clinched the East Division, so they're all set. Then the Ottawa Red Blacks, despite being on a bye, clinched the playoff spot as well with an 8-6-1 and record. The Toronto Argonauts sit at 8-7, and seven, followed by the Hamilton Tiger Cats at 6-10. and 10. In the West Division, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers sit at 10-6 and six and have clinched their home playoff game. And Saskatchewan clinched their playoff spot. They sit at 8-7-1. Eight, and one. And the BC Lions clinched that final West Division spot at 8-8, eight and eight, which means the Edmonton Elks at 5-11 and 11 have been eliminated, as have the Calgary Stampeders at 4-10-1. and one. Yeah, the, the Blue Bombers have not clinched a home playoff game. They just clinched a playoff spot because, you know, with three weeks to go, uh, the Saskatchewan is two games behind them, so is BC. It could be anybody winning. Well, I think, they, I think no matter what, they would have a be- good enough record to still host a, p- a home playoff game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's how I read it. Okay. So, All right. uh, but then you made an interesting note on our other show about how this is the first year that a team from – was it Alberta? Alberta, the province of Alberta. Yep, that's well, where uh, Edmonton and Calgary are at. Uh, first time since uh, God, it was since 1948, I think, 70 some years that uh, one of those two teams uh, failed to make the playoffs this year. So, yeah, yeah. It's pretty pretty interesting. Yeah, but a long great history there with the Canadian Football League. Yeah. All right, everybody. Well, we're going to stay in the great white north, and uh, we're going to throw it over to Randy, who's going to talk about some Canadian college football scores. Yes, in up there in U Sports, uh, University Sports, which is their version of the NCAA, it was the Bishop's Gators over the St. Francis Xavier X-Men, 42-37 to 37 in double overtime. It was the Guelph Griffins over the Windsor Lancers, 45-40, to 40. And it was the Western Ontario Mustangs over the McMaster's Marauders, 61 to 26. And also in the Canadian Junior Football League, it was the Langley Rams over the West Shore Rebels, 24 to 13. 
the Quint Skyhawks over the Greater Toronto Area Grizzlies, 52-6. to And it was the St. Clair Saints over the Hamilton Hurricanes, 74-10. to And now we're going to head back to the United States and cover some U.S. college football games. This was week six in college football down here. We're going to look at some of the top ten games, or all the top ten games, actually. Uh, Vanderbilt. Upset number one Alabama forty to thirty five. Uh, this was a shocker. Oh Fan, yeah, fans tore down the goalposts, carried them through the streets, and threw them in the river. Uh, and the school has now been fined one hundred thousand dollars by the SEC uh, for the fans storming the field. Absolutely ludicrous. I, I mean, know. what a you... sight! I can't remember any other schools getting fined for that. Well, maybe we've talked about it before. But I knew it was a rule. You, but, you weren't supposed to storm the field. But, I mean, but it's, it's hard to stop. It's so hard to stop. It's not the school's fault. Like, yeah. what, do you, what do you expect these poor people making minimum wage, running security, and a bunch of drunk college kids <laughs> decide to storm? What are you going to do? Seriously. It, it, especially, like, in an upset win like this. Just let yeah. it slide. The number one team in the country. You're not even ranked. Right. And- <laughs> the first time Alabama has, or Vanderbilt has beat Alabama in how many years? I don't think since the I 80s. Don't know. Don't I don't know. even sooner than or beyond that. I don't know, but unbelievable for Vanderbilt. I mean, good shoot, for them. Good for them. It's going to be a memory that those fans are going to have for the rest yes. of their lives. And then, if you're also uh, out there and look on eBay, you can find a piece of those goalposts that people are selling. <laughs> everybody, they must have fished them out of the river, right. and now they're selling them to try and pay the fine <laughs> by <laughs> the SEC. So, yeah. Go go buy your souvenir or your chunk of goalposts. I don't know. What do you think about that? Do you have a problem with the kids stealing the I mean, I have a problem with them stealing the goalposts. I mean, it's funny and it's, to, to see the video of them marching down the street. It's like one that. thing to 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 pull down the goalposts. I mean, that's fine. They can fix that. The goalposts are right there. But to take them out of the stadium <laughs> Down the street, that that's a bit much, I think. I'd love um, to see the logistics of how they did that. Like, do they just let them walk through the gate? Like, where are they leaving? Are they going back through the stands? How are they doing that? I actually, uh, I, I posted something on on uh, Facebook and Twitter, and it was a uh, like a night vision um, scene of the stadium with the kids going over the wall, and it looked like a zombie movie, a black and white zombie movie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's there's a goal post and there's just kids going you know, and this was taking them out of the stadium or something I don't know but I mean, that whole scene cool. of them in the street looked like a zombie movie just yeah. slowly trudging through yeah. man <laughs> absolutely bonkers I I mean this is the part of college football I love I'm okay with the yeah. storm in the field I'm not cool with the stealing of the goal post like come on guys right. some poor hey. groundskeeper the school's got to pay for that if you want to storm the field and celebrate that's awesome sure and but don't hurt anybody if you want to go take your couches and throw them out in the street and burn them that's your prerogative too as long as nobody gets hurt i don't care yeah you know so. like i said the property damage as far as uh you know the goal post being pulled down if, if they're not too damaged they can put those right back up and yeah they probably have a spare set laying around just for stuff like this and if you're if you're one of those schools you got to know like hey maybe someday we'll have our goal post ripped out <clears> and, <throat> in a big celebration we won't care like <laughs> We're ready. We're ready for it. Our grounds crew is ready. West, right. Western Michigan's got to be ready for that big upset win at their stadium someday. I don't know. That's the question we can ask them <gasps> sometime. Yes. <laughs> Do you have spare goalposts in case? Are there spare goalposts in case you beat Alabama at Western Michigan? <laughs> well, for one thing, Alabama would never come to Western That's... Michigan. We've had Michigan State here before, and yeah. they almost upset them when they were there because – I was at that game. We were at that game. You were at that game. Yeah. No, were you at that game? I was at that game. They okay. gave him a good fight for yes, most of that game. Yes, it was an excellent game. So close, and we had our Open, chance. I think it opened up with a kickoff return for a touchdown. Yeah, it was awesome. It was, yeah, it was almost. Oh. And then they almost ran a punt back. And all. It was a great game. Awesome. Great experience. Yes. Okay, moving on. <clears throat> uh, number two, Texas had a bye. Ohio, number three. <laughs> I love I love how we spent so much time talking about the number one team. And then number two team, and they were on a bye. We're moving yeah, on. Yeah, nothing to, nothing to see here. No no story about Arch Manning and what he did on his bye week? Nope. Okay. Uh, number three, Ohio State over Iowa, 35-7. to seven. Uh, Arkansas upset number four, Tennessee, 19-14. to 14. Arkansas was also fined by the SEC. Uh, in this case, it was $250,000 for their... Uh, fans storming the field, right. and the reason it was more because this is their second offense. What was the first offense you you ask? Uh, the first one was after a men's basketball game uh, last year when the Ray- Razorbacks defeated number nine Duke eighty to seventy five in the SEC ACC Challenge. Oh. Fans stormed the field at, and they got the penalized one hundred thousand dollars then. So now it's two hundred fifty thousand dollars. If it happens again, 
uh, in the next year or so or whenever, it's going to be five hundred thousand uh, dollars in fines. I hope it's for some meaning, like not a meaningless sport, but I hope it's in one of these other sports where it's just like really like like a softball game or uh, lacrosse, men's lacrosse, <laughs> or water polo whatever these yeah. schools might have the chess team <laughs> big upset for the chess team they beat number one ranked i don't know a nerd nerd tech harvard and all the and all the nerds in the stands with their pocket protectors <laughs> storm the field and then immediately use their inhalers <laughs> the, f- the field was littered with pocket protectors from end to end oh my gosh <laughs> it was a massacre yeah all right, let's keep going here. Got a lot of scores to go through. Uh, number five, Georgia over Auburn, thirty-one to thirteen. Number six, Oregon, Oregon over Michigan State, thirty-one to ten. You brought this game to my attention, and uh, they had Oregon had the ugliest uniforms. Those stupid I, yellow things I don't with get the it. was it a black helmet? Yeah, it was a black helmet with the wings kind of. Well, so the, yeah, they had the wings on it, but f- there was I think the players helped design some of it. Stupid. But I, the only part of the uniform I liked. Was that because it was something to do with a ch- not a charity, but there was some cause that uh, part of the uniform was dedicated to. Mm. But they used the O in the Oregon logo, and they added the little uh, tails of like when you see like the yellow ribbon. You know, they, everybody's oh, got like okay. the different ribbon colors. Right. It was kind of like that. So they had little two little things underneath the O to make it look like one of those yellow ribbons. Which okay. I was like, that's kind of cool. That's the only part of that uniform I liked. So I get why they went all yellow. Not that I liked it. No. Uh, the Oregon Duck apparently also did the uh, Napoleon Dynamite dance at some point during the game. I want to say before the game, he did the Napoleon Dynamite dance. Uh, Came out on a motorcycle because I was watching some of this game. Uh, <laughs> and Michigan State started off kind of hanging with them, but, man, Michigan State stinks. I, I couldn't watch this game just because of the Oregon uniforms. Oh. I, I watched a little bit, and I said, this hurts my eyes uh, so much. I went to something else. Uh, let's see. Number seven, Penn State over UCLA, twenty-seven to eleven. Number eight, Miami of Florida over California, thirty-nine to thirty-eight. In a I, real squeaker. I think they had to come back for that one too. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, number twenty-five, Texas A&M upset number nine Missouri, and I didn't even write the score down. I was so excited they had an upset <laughs> there. I didn't have the score. And then finally, in the top ten, uh, Washington upset number ten Michigan State or Michigan, not Michigan State. 27 to 17. I think Michigan has dropped down to 17 in Oof. the latest poll. So, I mean, Michigan's yeah. definitely not the same team they were last no, year. No, but for Washington, not. hey, a little revenge for the national championship yeah. uh, now that they're in the same conference. Uh, I saw a video from this. I don't know what happened. There was some sort of altercation between a Michigan staffer and some Washington fans. Hmm. And supposedly the guy was the uh, high school – like. Uh, director of high school relations or something like that, and he was on the side. Yeah, totally cussing out some Washington fans. Not a good look. Um, I don't have all that information for me, but not a good look. I saw the video floating around Twitter, and uh, come on, Michigan. I know you're getting beat, but be a little a little classier than that. Yeah. I mean, geez. Yeah. All right, uh, moving on. Uh, we're going to talk about some upsets, shutouts, blowouts, and more. Minnesota upset number 11, USC, 24-17. to 17. Again, USC losing another Big Ten, you know, Big Ten game. Mm. Are they just not set up to be physical? Like, I feel like the Big Ten is just such a physical conference that maybe USC, clearly Oregon is going to be fine, I think. Yeah. Uh, and we'll find out when they play Ohio State soon. Mm. But I just don't think USC is built for Big Ten football. Mm. I mean, that, that's two games in the last three weeks that they've had against, you know, Typical Big Ten opponents, and right. boof, hmm. got beat. Okay. Uh, let's see. SMU upset number 22, Louisville, 34-27. to 27. Number 23, Indiana improves to 6-0 and on the season with a win over Northwestern, 41-24. to 24. Indiana becomes the first bowl-eligible team of the season. Yeah, I, I mean, good for them. Mm-hmm. Their program, I don't really think about a whole lot, other than the fact we have a family member who is a part of that coaching staff. Right. Or the staff. I won't say coaching staff. Yeah. He's well, a part of the staff on the sideline. I'm not sure exactly what his title yeah, is. Yeah, I haven't bothered to ask him because he's there on the sideline. We're not though. that nosy. We try not to. We're letting him do his thing. <laughs> but, but when you think of, you know, bowl eligible teams, you don't think about somebody becoming bowl eligible already in week six. Right. And North or um, Indiana is not one of the teams that you think of that's no. going to be bowl. You're, you're thinking maybe Michigan, Ohio State, Notre Dame is going to be bowl eligible after six six wins. But no, it, this year's number 23, Indiana. So yeah. good for them. I mean, you'd think there'd be a few other because there's some undefeated teams still. But I mean, we're six weeks into the season. Yeah, teams right. have had buys. So 
I think that's crazy that Indiana's the first team to just have they not had a bye yet. Clearly, they haven't. If it's I don't know six, they're six and zero, oh and it's we're going into week seven this week. Yeah. So hmm. good for them. Uh, they're they're always one of those schools that I've always kind of I won't say looked down on, but they've never really been a powerhouse or anything. But hey, six wins, yep. first bowl eligible team. Yep. Uh, you know, you're number twenty three in the country. Yep. I mean, they got nowhere to go but up. Yeah. All right, uh, Tulane over UAB seventy one to twenty. It was Jacksonville State over Kennesaw State sixty three to twenty four, UNC Charlotte over East Carolina fifty five to twenty four, Wisconsin over Purdue fifty two to six. Hey, do you want to go to a Purdue game? Uh, a guy at work was saying that Purdue's got fifteen dollar tickets down there to go see a game at uh, their stadium, hmm. and uh, it's an eight hour drive for us. But I mean, that long eight hours? I think so. Wherever Purdue's at. Yeah, I didn't think it was that far down. I think it's that far down. I mean, I don't uh, where Indiana plays is what like is oh, that eight yeah. hours? Yeah, no, that's about that's about a five hour drive, maybe oh. six. I don't know. I don't know why he said eight hours, but <laughs> apparently fifteen dollar tickets if you want to go see a Purdue home game. Hmm. Yeah. Depends on who they're playing. Uh, let's see, where was I here? Marshall over Marshall Appalachian over State. Appalachian State, fifty two to thirty seven. Western Michigan over Ball State, forty five to forty two. Go Western. And uh, Oregon State over Colorado State, 39-31 to 31 in double overtime. Turning to the military academies, Army improved to 5-0 and with a win over Tulsa, 49-7. to 7. And Navy also improved to 5-0 and with a win over Air Force, 34-7. to 7. Wow, if both those teams get one more win, they'll be bowl eligible. <laughs> That's pretty sweet. Army and Navy being bowl eligible in the yeah. same season. I'm sure it's happened recently. but uh, uh, No, 1945. That's the last time both of them were bowl eligible together? Well, that's the last time they were both 5-0. and oh. oh, shoot. So, yeah. Man. There was no bowl eligible back in 1945. Well, there was only like one recently. or two bowls. I'm just talking <laughs> so. in the last several years because I can't remember Army or Navy both being. They, well, they yeah, they've been in some bowls. They they usually go to some military bowl or sponsored by the military or something. I know they have individual. I'm it. just saying like in the same year because usually it seems like if one team's good, the other mm, team's crap. True. That's true. Uh, so that's yeah. what I was just curious And Air about. Force has been the dominant team as far as, you yeah, know. Well, uh, they, oh, and they beat Air Force. Year, yeah. yeah, Air Force is not the same this year. Yeah. But, uh, but I'd still love to go see a game out there. All right, um, let's see. Here's a little bit of a story. Uh, As reported in The Athletic, uh, we finally got some details concerning the proposed college football Super League that, you know, we talked about, uh, what, back in February, maybe? Maybe. I I don't remember. But, uh, yeah, they want to put, the you know, some group of people is trying to push for a Super League. Um, But, anyway, they want to call it the College Football. A college Student Football League, the CSFL, stupid name right from the start. Uh, the current 136 FBS schools would be divided into two conferences, the Power 12, which would have 72 teams, and the Group of Eight, which would have 64 teams. Now, the current college football playoff contract with ESPN runs through the 2031-2032 season, so don't look for this to happen anytime soon if it ever does happen. This Jeez. is just somebody's idea, but they did come out this week uh, with, with a big article, and uh, it had a lot of details, and it had charts of exactly where all these 136 teams would be in these two divisions. So uh, just a real quick look at some of them. Uh, the You're Power where the 12, notables at. Yeah, uh, the Power 12 Conference is going to have 12 six-team uh, divisions that are geographically based which doesn't make a whole lot of sense because in the very first one, it's got uh, Navy and Notre Dame. And and I didn't write down all the other teams, but if you look at all the other teams in that East Division, uh, they're all on the East Coast. And then you've got Notre Dame way over here in the Midwest. Right. So, you know, they're just, they're plopping these schools where they think, you know, uh, they don't want to have Notre Dame in with Michigan or Michigan State or Ohio State so that they can, you know, play against each other in the playoffs and they even got yeah like you go to like the great lakes where you got illinois indiana michigan michigan state northwestern and purdue so you're telling me you're just gonna ignore putting ohio state and michigan in the same right you know yeah. division ohio together? state's in the midwest so they're yeah. in another at a different uh, 16 division that's crazy because then look at this midwest is iowa iowa state minnesota nebraska ohio state wisconsin so it's like okay most of the big 10 <laughs> and so was the Great Lakes. But it's just like you have all these schools around it, but Ohio State and Michigan are closer than Wisconsin or uh, Iowa. Come uh, on. This, this, this is, is silly. Is, this is we could do a better job. But but of the tw- you know, the twelve 
uh, 16 divisions, you've got the East, the Mid-East, the Great Lakes, the Midwest, the Carolinas, the Mid-South, the South, the Southeast, the Plains, the Texas Division, the South, and the Southwest. So some, some of them do make sense. You look how geographically, yeah, they're grouping these schools together. That makes total sense. But then, you know, to throw Notre Dame out there with the teams in the East, I don't know. Then you move on to that group of eight. They have eight eight team divisions. That's how you get the 64. And they have the East, Midwest, West, Midwest, South, Southeast, West, and Central. And the only thing I really took from this is that uh, Western Michigan, Central Michigan, and Eastern Michigan, who uh, you know have been playing in the MAC, they're now uh, in what's called the Midwest Conference uh, or division. I don't know. So, yeah, I, I didn't care for the way a lot of this was uh, laid out. But there was no mention on this chart. There was like three open spaces. Uh, they, they didn't have Army on there. They didn't have Air Force on there. And one other school, I couldn't figure out who, who they were missing. But I assumed that Army would go into the east and that Air Force would go into the central because there's a lot of schools you know, right around uh, uh, Air Force in that central division. Um, so I, I don't know. It just it didn't make a whole lot of sense, but this is the most detail that we've got. So if you want to see this, these charts where all these schools are going to be or lists, uh, it's going to be on our Facebook and Twitter feed. Um, well, you have from, to do some searching for it. Yeah, do. it's from like three or four days ago, so you got to scroll down a little ways. But, uh, uh, yeah, it talks about the, the college super league, and uh, you, you open that up and you scroll down a little bit on that, and you'll see – uh, all the teams divided into their divisions. I'm just saying, we we whoever's come up with this idea, step aside, let the world of football handle it, and we'll call it <laughs> the World of Football Super League. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And we'll uh, we'll we fix couldn't it. do any worse. We than could this. fix. We can fix college football, Randy. <laughs> yeah. I know we can. Yeah. We can't fix stuff right here in our own <laughs> in our own. Is man that game. why this chair still got a squeak in it? <laughs> And another thing, there was a graphic that came out that said that we're in the midst of 55 straight days of football between the NFL and college. Uh, from October 3rd to November 26th, there is some sort of a college or NFL game every single day. We're talking Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So it's crazy. And we did something similar last year. We came up with our own little calendars of events. And, uh, you know, we, we we listed for like three or four months uh Every day when you know we, we put like a college logo, if there was a college game or more games that day, NFL games. Um, God, what else we had? We we had some of our shows that filled in the spaces on Tuesdays and Wednesdays where there weren't any football games, but you still had uh, us you could listen to. Oh, dang, yeah! Like tonight we got FIU taking on Liberty on uh, CBS Sports Network. So yeah, man. Uh, then tomorrow you got New Mexico State and Jacksonville State. That's a barn burner. <laughs> boy, oh boy. <laughs> Coastal Carolina and James Madison on Thursday. Ooh, that should be a good that game. That actually would be that a good game. That actually sounds like yeah. it'll be a good game. Yeah. So, yeah, football every night, huh? Don't tell my girlfriend that. <laughs> it's bad enough as it is. Yeah, I'm not telling your mother either about this. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the FCS division. Uh, Mercyhurst shut out Buffalo State 55 to nothing. It was Rhode Island over Hampton 46 to 44 in double overtime. And North Alabama over Utah Tech, sixty to fourteen. Now we're going to move on to Division Two. It was Saginaw Valley over Northern Michigan, sixty-three to fourteen. Walsh over Lake Erie, sixty-three to thirty-four. And Catawba over Anderson of South Carolina, forty-four to forty-one in overtime. Now let's go to Division Three. Olivet over Kalamazoo College, forty-five to twelve. The Coast Guard Academy defeated MIT 21 to 19, and Alma over Calvin 73 to 13. Wow. Uh, move on to the NAIA. It was Taylor of Indiana over St. Francis of Indiana 58 to 36. Grandview shut out Clark of Iowa 89 to nothing. Can you imagine that? Uh, and Tabor over Bethel of Kansas 34 to 31 in a real squeaker. Now we move down to the uh, junior college level, the National Junior College Athletic Association, NJCAA, Iowa Western over our favorite Snow College from Utah, 31-20. to 20. This was the first loss of the season for Snow College. They were 5-0, and oh, now they're 5-1. and one. So, uh, yeah, they, they did kind of play some cream puffs early on. Now they're getting into the regular meat of their schedule. And, but they're still, they're fine. They'll do fine this year. Uh, let's see, Myrtle Beach. 
Collegiate over Community Christian of Michigan, 60-28, to and Minnesota West over Minnesota North Vermilion, 66-7. to Whew, that's a lot of college football that scores. That is a lot. So now let's take a little break, and let's gonna go, we're going to go over and get some scores from Japan. And now we're off across the Pacific, where our man in Japan, Greg St. James, has all the news from the land of the rising sun. Greetings from Japan. This is Greg St. James with your Week 6 X-League report. We had Week 3 of the X-League area, the second division play this past week, with the Tanai Deers winning 14-7 over the Penta Ocean Pirates, Mitsubishi Club Triax 19-6 over Bulls FC, the Shinagawa Bullseyes 17 to 12 over the Blue Thunders, the Metropolitan Police Department, Tokyo Metropolitan Police Department Eagles 14 to 9 over the Densu Caterpillars, and we had the As One Black Eagles 27 to 10 over the Nagoya Cyclones. We also had an added game in X League Super. It was a game that was postponed week one due to a typhoon here. So what I have dubbed it, at least on our website at the gridironjapan.jp website, the gridironjapan.net, what I like to call the Gridiron Japan News Hub website, basically week 3.5 in X-League Super Play. And in this game, we had the, this is a hard word for me to pronounce after all this time here, but the Sexy Sui Challengers, 21 to 20, over the Elecom Finies. And in this game, we had a kid by the name of Boogie Knight who caught 12 passes for 200 yards and three touchdowns from quarterback Garrett Saffron of the Challengers to win the game. And the game was decided basically um, by a missed PAT in the fourth quarter by the Finies who uh, had they converted that PAT. The game may have ended either in a tie or it might have ended in a Finies win. You just never know with the way the ball bounces. Hey, with all that said, it is Monday night football here in Japan on a Tuesday morning. Back to you, Randy and Adam, and we'll talk to you next week. Thank you, Greg, for that report. Uh, I heard from Greg the other day. Uh, he likes the intro that you put oh, together. Oh, good. So, well, thank uh, you. <laughs> took me five minutes. Yeah, I know. And, and we talked about doing some different ones, you know, maybe coming up with a couple of different kinds of music or whatever. But now you're like... I don't have five minutes to spare anymore. I, we may not change this after well, so, all. You got to do. You're the one who's got these ideas. I'll help you put it together. But I've done my part. I, I might experiment with a little bit. We'll we'll see. Whatever. All right, we're gonna head on back to the U.S. now for some more happenings in the world of football. Haven't per- heard anything from the uh, Arena Football One yet. So on, we'll skip it on another uh, uh, expansion team. But we're looking for another expansion team any day now. Uh, but we do have some news from the National Arena League. The Colorado Spartans are moving from Loveland, Colorado to Denver. Uh, I don't think they're going to change their name or anything. They're just changing venues. But uh, Loveland, I guess, is about 50 miles nor- uh, north of uh, Denver. So they're heading south. And, uh, yeah, so they're moving to the big city now. So maybe they'll get more fans, more more butts in the seats. Maybe. Sounds like a, a nice uh, move if, you know, establishes establish yourself in denver and who knows maybe uh, a brand change at some point maybe to the denver something or other a little more brand recognition yeah, yeah the denver spartans instead of the colorado maybe spartans. or you change your name to something a little more familiar and then you hop to a different league i don't know <laughs> i'm not saying that's what's going to happen but i'm just uh just... well i'm i'm i also think that this is a brand new arena that they're moving into uh so they I don't know. Maybe well, they got a good deal to come down and probably yeah. move into that because you know they want they want events. they need tenants. <laughs> sure, yeah. So I, I'm if I'm not mistaken, this was a new arena that they're moving into. I could I could be wrong. All right, uh, let's see today's birthdays and anniversaries for October eighth. Coach Dana X Bible. God, what a name! That's a cool name. <laughs> Born on this date in 1891, he passed away in 1980 at the age of 88. Uh, he was the head coach at Nebraska, Texas, Texas A&M, Mississippi College, and LSU between the years of 1913 and 1946. Wow. Uh, yeah, I've read some stuff uh, about him. and The first time I saw that name, Dana X. Bible. You know, 
Sure, yeah, you, you can have a middle initial of X, you know, Xavier or whatever, but I've never heard of anybody with the last name of Bible before. That's pretty, so pretty gnarly. It's, it is. It's sounds like cool. the lead singer for like a, a punk band or something. <laughs> or a Christian rock band? Nope, I wouldn't even say that. <laughs> But, yep, uh, today would be his birthday. And let's see. Okay, let's move on to some obituaries. Actually, we only got one this week because I was delinquent in uh, getting these things prepared this week for change. But there's a big one. Yes, uh, but I had to do one of them. Uh, This is where we take a moment and honor those who made the world of football a better place. Um, We're talking about Greg Landry. Uh, He was a quarterback in the NFL and the USFL. Uh, He's passed away at the age of 77. Landry played his collegiate football at Massachusetts, and he was the 11th overall pick in the 1968 NFL draft by the Detroit Lions. I didn't realize he was, you know, 11th overall. I thought he was like in the second or third round when he got picked, but 11th overall that year. Uh, He played for the Lions from 1968 to 1978. Uh, Then he went on to play for the Baltimore Colts from 79 to 81. Uh, Then he went to the USFL. And uh, he played for the Chicago Blitz in 1983 and the Arizona Wranglers in 1984. Um, And then he he came back and he was the offensive coordinator of the Bears from 89 to 92. And uh, he was a quarterback's coach of the Lions in 95 and 96. But I will always remember him for this one play. Uh, It was a little bit before my time, but it's... I, I. Posted it the other day. Uh, the local station out of Lansing um, post, did his obituary, and they showed this. And I was—I've been going through YouTube trying to find this play, and I've seen it. I think it's—it's it's not a standalone YouTube um, thing that you can find, but it's with other things like the top ten quarterback you know, runs or something like that. Uh, he had a seventy-six yard run uh, on a quarterback sneak, hmm. and he was like they were backed up on their, their own five-yard line or something like that, and. He just immediately got the ball and without hesitation shot right through the line and there was nobody there. He ran for 76 yards until he got tackled like at the 15-yard line uh, oh. of the Packers. This was a game against the Packers. I'm not sure, exactly sure what year, but um, I, I posted that on our Facebook and Twitter feed. If you look at the uh, obituaries, it was from a, a local TV station and they showed that that play. Just awesome. And I had his... Uh, Sports Illustrated poster on my wall when I was growing up because I started following in following the Lions in '75, and he was one of the first players. You know him and Dexter Busty and Horace King in the backfield, and you had Lem Barney and Charlie Sanders on defense, and just a great team. That was that was the team that I grew up with, mm. and um, I always wanted to meet Greg Landry. Never did. Um, we got to meet Billy Sims, which is another mm. one of my all-time favorite players. Uh, but it was very sad to hear about the passing of Greg Landry. Yeah, and that's the second like big name Lions uh, alum in about a month, right? Didn't we just have uh, a guy last month um, blanking on his name all of a sudden? But uh, <laughs> he, he was a, he was in the video for the uniforms and uh, Hall of Famer. Come on, why why are you blanking on the, the guy? Uh, oh 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 oh, um, not Joe Schmidt. Uh, yeah, was it Joe Schmidt? I can't I can't remember. That's, I'll, do, I'll that's have to why, go back and that's look. That's why I write these things down, because I can't remember. But, yeah, uh, very sorry to hear about Greg Landry. Uh, condolences to his family. He was a great player. It meant a lot to the team and the city of Detroit. Um, uh, they all. I did uh, When I was searching for his play, uh, I ran across a United Way ad that he did, uh, talking about you know uh, Detroit and all that and, and all the good things that the United Way was doing there. And that was, that was kind of cool. Um, so, yeah. Uh, shall I move on here, or are you um, still looking at it? I'm, I'm like trying to find it right now, so I'm pulling up one of our old thumbnails <laughs> just to prove it. But uh, there's an ad. Uh, <laughs> darn ads on YouTube. <laughs> I'm just trying to look at the thumbnail and uh, figure out who it is. And uh, Joe Schmidt, yeah. Was it Joe Schmidt? It was okay. Joe Schmidt. Okay. I'll see all that banter for that. <laughs> all right. All right, let's um, uh, move on here. Our upcoming events calendar. This Sunday, October 13th, the Jaguars are going to be taking on the Bears at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium in London, another 9.30 game on NFL Network this week. And then the following week, uh, Sunday, October 20th, it's going to be the Patriots taking on the Jaguars at Wembley Stadium in London, another 9.30 a.m. game on uh, NFL Network. 
Uh, Saturday, October 26th, the CFL regular season come to an end. There's only three weeks left in the regular season up there. Um, it's it's coming up fast, the playoffs. And then uh, Sunday, November 10th, it's going to be the Giants against the Panthers in Munich, Germany in the NFL. Another th- 9.30 a.m. game on NFL Network. And finally, on our upcoming events calendar, Sunday, November 17th, the 111th CFL Grey Cup game in Vancouver, where you and I are going to be sitting somewhere around the 55-yard line. It is line. getting closer and closer. I, I looked at the calendar. I was like, oh, crap, that's like next yeah. month. Yeah. Yeah, I got, a, I got a trip to Orlando in two weeks with uh, your brother Abram, and then I come back for a couple weeks, and then we're off to what Vancouver. A, what about, man, for you to go down to the right corner, like yeah. on the map, and then you're going to yeah. go down to the far upper left Absolutely. corner? <laughs> man, Randy's just a traveling man. I love to travel. Uh, I love to travel. I, I, I'd rather drive, but uh, but not that, that drive. a little bit too far. All right. Uh, anything else before we close the show out? Actually, yes. I think there was just some breaking news okay. from the NFL. Cool. As Saints quarterback Derek Carr is expected to miss multiple games mm. due to an oblique injury suffered during Monday night's loss against the Chiefs. Yeah, so. he left the game early. They, they escorted him to the locker room. and, and uh, I don't remember if I actually saw the play that he got injured on. Um, I was kind of flipping back and forth in that game, and that's, I don't think I actually saw it. But the only I didn't really watch this game, uh, but I did see the highlight of Taylor Swift looking into the camera <laughs> and saying, I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> and then they cut away immediately. What? Yes. Are oh, you that, serious? I'm dead serious. I saw this I on not. Instagram. <laughs> like, you can't hear her say it. You see her mouthing the words. I don't know what play happened prior to this, but it's her mouthing, oh, my God, I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> And then the camera, like they had a, a thing wipe, you know, across the screen or whatever. Oh yeah, let me see if I you can pull it up. You don't think that that was one of those like uh, bad lip reading uh, videos that you used to show me, where they had people, you know, uh, saying what they think the people on the sidelines are saying. Th- those were kind of hysterical because they were making up all kinds of stuff, but it looked exactly like what they were actually. Oh, I saying. cleaned up the language, and I am no lip reader, but I will, <laughs> I will show you the video. In the tweet right here. You're gonna uh, you're gonna make me watch this on, on it's like live a four, podcast. It's a four second video, so I'm gonna turn it around okay. as soon as it restarts. So right. just tell me that you, she says what she looks like she's saying. I, I, it's it was hard to say. It's so small on your phone. I'm holding it out. Come on, you're you're no Ripley lip reader, but No, I don't think that's what she said. That's exactly what you well, uh, yeah. Oh my she, god, she, yes, but I don't think it was I'm gonna kill myself. It's effing killer. Yeah. <laughs> Because there's a swear word in there you're missing. Yep, and it, and it just cuts away. I don't think I, I'd have to watch it. Uh, I've been a few watching it on a loop here, <laughs> and she's just yeah. Thank you, Taylor Swift, for that. Uh, for that. Jeez. All right. Anything else before we close the show out? Say no. Um. Say no. Say no. Just uh, say no. No, there's nothing else. All right. Whew, thank goodness. Peer pressure. I hate well, it. Well, that's all the time we've got for this week, folks. <laughs> if you learned something during this podcast, and I can't understand why, about the incredible amount of diversity that exists in the world of football, then we have done our job. Visit our website at theworldoffootball.com for news, links, upcoming events, original articles, videos, and more. Our email address is info at theworldoffootball.com. You can follow The World of Football on X facebook and instagram where the address for all three of those is t w o f kalamazoo new episodes of this podcast are posted on tuesdays and are available on soundcloud apple Podcasts, tune in spotify iHeartRadio, and amazon music so you can simply ask your alexa device to play the world of football podcast to hear us on whatever uh, alexa devices you may have you can also find the full audio version of this show over on our YouTube page. Just enter the World of Football Kalamazoo or use the handle at the World of Football in that YouTube search bar. So please spread the word, subscribe, rate, review, give us a like, leave us a comment, buy a stinking shirt, and let us know <laughs> what you think. And please come be a part of the football conversation. Any uh, any new t-shirts? I got a couple of designs uh, that have run past you. You seemed lukewarm to those. I am but... open to them. Uh, <laughs> I have one in mind. If anybody watched our Just Lying Around video this past week, you would yeah. know that Timmy the referee, uh, patent pending character <laughs> uh, for the world of football, might have to end up on a t-shirt. Hmm. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that uh, sometime. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, And remember, folks, some people may love football more than we do, but nobody, and I mean nobody, loves more football than the two of us guys sitting here in Kalamazoo talking about football every week. Until next time, when we'll try and do a better job. Yeah, right. I'm Randy Snow. 
And I'm proud that you didn't have a choking episode during a almost this did episode. there for a little bit. I I almost did, but I I powered through it. Man, the last few weeks, I don't know what you've been eating or drinking. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> It's, it's just so much talking and reading. You you talk so much at the beginning because you How do the CFL and the you? NFL stuff, and and then you throw it to me for college stuff. And I got all those scores to go through. And yeah, we need to break it up a little bit differently. But uh, I got we, some, we probably will. I got some thoughts, but you can wrap okay. it up. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll see you all next week. <laughs>